Anytime you choose a boot for adventure riding, what you really have to decide is what's most important to you. Are you traveling? Are you off-road? Are you doing silly things? Are you a new rider who really needs to optimize your protection? Or are you a really good experienced rider? You don't crash often, but when you do, you make it count. For me, the most protective boot I've found is the CD Crossfire. And here's why I like this boot specifically for adventure riding. It's got a hinge at the ankle, which allows flexibility when you're walking, makes it a little quicker break in as far as any other boot, a uh, pure motocross style boot. The toe on it is very narrow and very shallow. If I'm street riding, it's much easier to get my toes above and below those shifters. Now they come with a steel tip on them. And that steel tip I take off immediately because when you put your toes down, especially if you're on an adventure bike and it's really tall, when you put those steel toes down onto the street, you end up with no traction. I remove those immediately just so I have better traction on the street, but also so I don't tear up and, and scratch up the bike. What really makes this protective though is the shank on the sole. And this is that shank, that ability to not flex this boot. If you were to ride down the trail, slip off and catch a rock or a stump, and this toe can bend back, you can hyperflex and then bust your feet on the front. The other reason that a very stiff sole on the bottom becomes an advantage for off-road is comfort and control of the motorcycle. When you sit on that peg standing for long periods of time, as adventure riders, if we're standing, sometimes it is for very long periods as opposed to a dirt bike where you're constantly moving around. That provides more support. That allows you to run a little smaller foot peg. You can pivot around on it and it gives you the support there. It's a high boot. It has good armor and protection all the way around. It has the shin protection, which unless you're riding a GS where you're slamming it into the back of the cylinders, the shin protection isn't as important adventure riding as dirt bike riding, unless you're riding your adventure bike like a dirt bike. The CD, uh, this CD Crossfire has an adjustment on the side where this plate can be tucked in. And that makes it much easier to fit this boot underneath the types of gear or adventure riding gear as opposed to pure hardcore dirt bike, uh, dirt bike pants, but allows you to get it underneath the pants a lot better. Very, uh, not incredibly expensive, but definitely a significant investment to get this boot. Comfortable walk around, likely my all-time favorite if I'm looking for protection on an adventure bike. i take one step down. This is my original, this, not this boot, but this brand and this model is my original adventure boot. This is the Alpenstar Tech 7. After my last video where I talked about off-road riding gear, just hardcore off-road gear, I mentioned that dirt bike boots are generally not waterproof and I was reminded that the Tech 7 comes in a waterproof version. It's called the Dry Star and it's their equivalent to Gore-Tex. So I have a set of those. I have used them and in normal casual riding, they work really well. But if I'm going hardcore off-road through major puddles, turns out they're only waterproof to the top of the boot. And at some point, all of those types of materials, Gore-Tex, they all have a saturation point. It's a little stiffer boot. Now it does have more flex in the toe. And that's more of an enduro style boot. Makes it a little more comfortable for just walking around on the street. Doesn't feel quite as much as a street boot, but that flex does end up allowing a little more potential for injury. It does not have any flex going the other direction, which means it's a very comfortable boot for standing on the pegs all day. The shin is non-adjustable. You need to make sure that your riding gear has enough space to get underneath that, that shin protection there. But a, definitely a very good boot, a great price point to get into it. But it's that sole, that stiff sole that's really something we're looking for. Also this side to side flex, you see I can really have to work hard to get that boot to bend sideways. That matters if you get pinned underneath it. A dirt bike isn't as big a deal on an adventure bike, especially if you have panniers, whether they're hard panniers or soft panniers, that becomes a pretty big concern. You do want that crush protection, not quite as heavy duty as the CD Crossfire, but the Alpenstar Tech 7s are absolutely 
Now, one of my favorite boots for people looking for a motocross style or a dirt bike style boot riding a bench bike. So it does have a narrow toe in it, which is nice for getting around the controls, but it is a thicker toe block. So a little more for getting underneath the controls. Did a, uh, I'll do another video on bike setup specifically, but you can adjust your, on most bikes, you can adjust your shift lever so that it's easier to get a thicker boot through. So these are both, both the CD Crossfire and the Tech 7 are serious hardcore off-road boots. This is the ultimate in protection if that's your main goal. Also, it gives you the ultimate in control and feel of the motorcycle because your, your foot is locked in so well, once you're riding, you have better control. And, and that's a huge win, especially if you're very new at this. Now, if we step it down just a bit, I have two different adventure boots. The ones that I wore in today are really pretty close to a motocross style boot, but this is at a very high price point. These are the Revit Expedition boot. They also have a waterproof liner in them. It's their Hydrotex version of that. They have some fancy knobs to tighten everything up. But most importantly, it has very good stiff protection. In fact, the sideways protection on this boot is equivalent to about where the Crossfire is. This has better side flex and crush protection than even the Tech 7s do. The front of the boot looks more like a regular road boot. If you're walking around town, it doesn't look like you're wearing space boots. It has about similar toe flex as the Tech 7s. They also have a little more grip on the bottom. It's more like a lightweight hiking sole. So for walking around, getting on the trail, it's gonna be just a little bit better for that. In reality, this is not much of a step down from that mid-weight motocross boot, but it's at a significant premium. The big downfall to this particular boot, the only thing I don't really care for, is the shin on this is very thick and it's very protective. Again, if you're a GS1200 rider, this might be something that matters to you. For the rest of you, not as much. But because it's so thick and it's not adjustable, it's it takes a lot more space underneath those riding pants. So very critical to check, make sure you have enough width at the bottom of that pant to fit into this boot. Otherwise, great boot, very comfortable. It feels like a walking shoe or a hiking boot, which is pretty hard to come by if you're looking for a protective boot that also is comfortable for walking around. On that note though, because it's so high and because it's also a waterproof liner, it's gonna be a very hot boot if you get into warm temperatures. One of my all time go-tos is the CD. Now this one has a lot more flex on the side. It's much more like a road boot. This is a CD Zero, which is a trials boot. It's also what the CD Discovery was modeled after. The CD Discovery was their adventure boot, but it was leather with waterproof liner. The Zero was a non-waterproof boot, which is a big thing for me. I prefer non-waterproof if I can find it, because it turns out once water gets in, it's very hard to get it back out. And eventually they all seem to get wet. This way it's, it dries out and it breathes just a little bit better. These have a sole on them with some grip for walking. They have a pretty stiff sole. In fact, the sole on this one is stiffer than even the Expedition and the Tech 7. And that's because it's a trials boot. They're expected to be standing on those pegs. They need that that mobility to move around on the bike. They're not taking big hits, they're not riding fast, but they are up and on the pegs. Becomes a very comfortable walking boot. It's a nice go-to, but we're really starting to get on the street side of the spectrum. If you fall down, it has zero crush protection. If you get underneath a bag or underneath a bike on this one, it's not gonna do anything for you. Couple of buckles on it. The original boot has a metal plate, or a, sorry, it has a plastic plate on the front that snaps into place. I remove that just to make the boot a little more road comfortable, and I just use the Velcro at the top. And this is the CD Zero or the Zero One. And if you can find the CD Discovery, then that's the waterproof leather version of this. So this is what an adventure boot is. And what a lot of people say, and I say it as well, 
If it says the word adventure in it, it's probably not the best off-road boot. There are very few exceptions to that. The Expedition is probably the only one that comes to mind. The CD Adventure is a road boot that looks like an off-road boot. The Discovery is a trials boot that gives you good support, but very little actual crash protection or crush protection. Adventure means it gives me a little bit more, but it's still primarily a touring boot. The last boot I have here is likely one of my favorites, and I wear this most of the time, but not when I'm off-road. And this is the Revit Pioneer, and it's just a short boot. It goes above the ankle, has ankle protection for the street. The flex on the front is similar to the Expedition. It has a very similar sole and it has the same type of tread on the bottom. So it does give me good protection, some flexibility, but again, no crush protection. If I get stuck underneath the bike or crushed underneath it, this is gonna be a problem. But it's a great boot for walking around in. It's a good boot for touring in or commuting in. And if I'm just doing some gravel road stuff out to a campsite, I'm personally willing to take the risk because that's what this all boils down to. How much risk are you willing to take? How hard are you riding? How often do you fall? If I'm a rider who's stretching to the ground, if I'm shorter or my bike is very tall and heavy, which this bike is, then I may want that extra support because the chance of getting pinned underneath it or, or slipping or rolling my ankle when I touch to the ground is much greater. If I know I'm primarily commuting, I'm confident my bike is light, or I'm very tall and I, I'm very stable when I come to stop, maybe I'm willing to take that risk, that crash risk, and have something more comfortable. But that's a reality that you have to come up with. As far as price point goes, these all vary. I'll put all the links in the video below for each of these boots that I've mentioned that I use personally. I endorse every single one of these because I use every one. I buy my boots, these aren't given to me, and that means I have to go out and make the decision, what's my best bang for the buck? What am I getting for my boot? And uh, there you go. So that's my, my story on boots. Great stuff. Now I gotta pack up. And today, having the waterproof is, isn't such a bad idea. If you haven't already hit subscribe, make sure you hit subscribe and check out my website at brettax.com. You'll find I post podcasts there every other Thursday. It's podcasts talking to industry experts, but more importantly and more often, riders just like yourself. If you want to help continue putting forth and helping me with the efforts for this, this type of production, consider joining me on Patreon. You'll find that under my name or you'll find links from my website. And... Most importantly, even on a cold, wet, miserable day like today, always smile while you ride because attitude really does matter.